what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy the explicit cursors one by one into SQL Plus and execute them. First of all, we're using DBMS output. I'm actually going to set server output on, and I'm going to go and do this. I'm sizing the buffer for DBMS output to a very large value, as I may be dumping out a lot of information. So, the first cursor. We're declaring a cursor in the declare section. Here's a record. This matches the act table. Down here, I'm going to explicitly open the acts or C acts cursor. I'm going to deliberately loop through each row found by the cursor. And after I'm finished, I'm going to close it. Now, since I'm not doing any SQL code which changes anything in the database, I don't need to do something like this. It's unnecessary. So I'll just comment it out for now. I could, however, place a raise command in here, which, in the case of any exceptions thrown, it will close the cursor, and it will raise the error up to the calling block, although I may not necessarily need to have that command in there because the exception is handled in here, and I don't necessarily want to pass the error up to the calling block, which could be all the way back up to the application. Also note that I've actually got two lines in this procedure which close the cursor. When I go through this piece of code, once I get to the exception, if I haven't thrown an exception, my execution path will actually pass down to the end block. When an exception is thrown anywhere between anywhere within these lines that are highlighted, it automatically jumps into the exception loop and executes this. So there is a possibility that I have opened the cursor and it hasn't reached this line and it jumps into the exception block. So I want to make sure I close the cursor. Remember, you have to close cursors, otherwise you can eventually cause problems with the database. There is a limit to how many cursors can be opened in an Oracle database at once. So now let's go and copy our cursor and paste it in. And here's the result we get. What we actually did was we simply opened the cursor, looped through it, fetched each row from the cursor into the record. Remember, the record represents a single row. The cursor is actually, internally, it's a pointer, but it represents the array of all the rows. I said, try to fetch. If I don't fetch, it's going to say exit when the cursor is not found. Remember? the internal cursor, SQL percent not found. The same percent not found value applies to any cursor which we create. When I don't find a record, it actually aborts the loop, closes the cursor, and exits the procedure. When I do find a row, I simply output the name of the act, which is what we have here. All the names of the acts in the act table. Let's go to our next example. What does this example do? It says this is for generic SQL, and you create the cursor like this. What I'm actually doing here, as opposed to the first example where I created a cursor and allocated the select statement to it in the declare section, I'm actually going to create the cursor and assign the select statement to it on the fly between the begin and end execution block, not in the declaration block. So the kind of cursor I create is a little bit different. It's actually something called a ref cursor. A ref cursor is purely a pointer. So in some respects, this kind of cursor, or this kind of explicit cursor, is something like a pre-allocated block of memory, or perhaps even a fixed array, if you like, and this type of explicit cursor is more of a pointer. In other words, a pointer to a chunk of memory rather than a large piece of reserved memory. It could be looked at like that. So I declare a type, which is actually a ref cursor, and is actually duplicating 
the row type of the ACT table. I then declare a cursor against the type, and I then declare a record as being a copy of the column structure of the ACT table. I then open the cursor for the ACT table for with a SELECT statement. And note that this SELECT statement can actually be dynamic. So what do I do in this cursor? More or less the same as the previous example, except that I've simply moved the definition of the cursor SELECT statement down into the procedural block. So let's simply take a copy of this procedure, and once again, we'll just execute it. We have two coming out of there namely two acts, because we only selected acts that started with C. Remember, the main difference between these first two examples is that this uses a simple cursor, or a simple explicit cursor, and this uses a ref cursor. Now let's take a look at my last example. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to pass a parameter into a procedure, which places a pattern into the select statement. That is the only difference between this cursor and the previous one. So let's create and compile and pass this procedure, which we've done. We have no errors. And we'll go back and we'll execute it a few times using the exec command. And there we have it. Two acts start with C. No acts start with null. And one act starts with A.